They wear white makeup, dress up in black, and look like the living dead. But they're not real life vampires. They're just part of the gothic movement. Emos are horrible, you know. They're posers. We are Well, theirs is a world like you've never seen before. Goth is all about dark music. It's about symbols of death and even dressing like vampires. I became a vampire like uh, four years ago. He like bit me like a couple places, like my neck and everywhere. Do you bite people with your fangs? I do. But mine are very sharp, so I have to be very, very careful about how I do it. Vampire Freaks became an essential network for goth scene members, but unfortunately, it also has a dark side. Hey celebrities, it's Vitaly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Do you remember my previous videos on the dark side of MySpace? Well, forget everything I've said about that. Actually, do not forget, I've changed my mind. But today we're gonna talk about its lesser known but way more dangerous competition. VampireFreaks.com, also known as the social network for gods. Can I touch it? Uh -huh. It's sharper than my dog's teeth. <laughs> Last night I went down the rabbit hole on this website, let me tell you something. We have a lot to explore today and I'm not even exaggerating. I'm not kidding. So if you enjoy my subculture videos, you better hit the like button, celebrity. Okay, buckle up legends, you're not ready for this one. Only on Vitaly's channel. But before we get started, thanks to our friends from Rocket Money for sponsoring this video. Don't skip this part, legend, let me explain. My new year's resolution is to get more responsible with my finances. Cause I live in LA and I spend like $40 every time I step outside. That's probably why I've been so isolated lately. <laughs> Rocket Money is finance platform that helps you to manage subscriptions, lower your bills, make a custom budget and grow your savings all in one place. The main reason I love using Rocket Money is because it helps me to cancel unwanted subscriptions safely and securely. Because recently I decided to check the history of my transactions and let me tell you something. I realized that I was paying for a crazy amount of subscriptions that I completely forgot about every single month. I don't know about you, but I signed up for a lot of free trials that I'm not even using anymore. And it's still coming out of my pocket. In this economy, no thanks. And Rocket Money has really been a game changer for me. It's not only identifies those subscriptions, but also cancels them from within the app with just a couple of taps so you can completely forget about customer service calls or anything like that. It's customers save an average of $720 a year, so it's definitely must-have. I also love using the lower your bills feature. Simply by uploading a picture of your bill and tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you, from internet service to cable and phone bills. So legend, do not wait and take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash itsvitaly to get started for free. You can also unlock even more features with premium. Once again, rocketmoney.com slash itsvitaly to get started for free. Okay, let's get back to the video. First of all, I do want to say that I was never a member of Vampire Freaks, simply because growing up it was never popular in my country. In fact, I've known of this website only as an online store for gothic clothing that it is now. And the fact that at some point I was a social media network had me completely surprised. Wow. I'm shook. But I had a brief gut era in the early 2000s, cause I wanted to impress my old boyfriend who was also in a subculture. And as it turned out, he was an effing creep. What a time to be alive. He was a creep and I was a catfish, but we'll get back to it a little bit later. So yeah, I kinda can relate to some things that we're gonna talk about today, my fellow gods. <laughs> Vampire Freaks was a social networking website created by the guy by the name Jed Burrelson in 1999, way before MySpace even existed. It initially began with a small number of forums dedicated to industrial, alternative and god music. Over the years, it became a truly unique platform for alternative scenes and its young creatives, uniting gods from across the globe to connect over their mutual fascination. Based Basically, it was a place for old freaks who were excited they had a place to call home. Just so you know, we're gonna talk more about the history of God's subculture later in this video. For now, let me explain what the website was all about. Vampire Freaks features included user groups that were called cults, basically the same thing as Facebook groups, and allowed users to create their forums within the website. The groups could be absolutely anything. Whatever topic you wanted to talk about, there were probably a cult for that. It also had event pages, music interviews, gothic models that were promoted on the homepage, and frequent contests. like people of the website or something like that. As I said, Vampire Freaks became an essential stuff for alternative music lovers. Its users were uploading a lot of underground industrial music that was pretty much impossible to find anywhere else. And even bigger subculture bands had an active profile on there that allowed fans to easily interact with their favorites. Some of those bands were The Birthday Massacre, Combi Christ and Emily Adam. They were also frequently promoted on the homepage. Love's 
and company loves me. Hello! Here we have an interview for Vampire Freaks with Jennifer from Area. Hello, Vampire Freak. What's up, guys? Here we got an interview for Vampire Freaks with Justin Symbol. By the way, from now on, I'm gonna be referring to it as VF, not Vanity Fair, Vampire Freaks. <laughs> it was also one of the first, if not the first, website where you could customize your profile using HTML coding. Uh-huh, honey. I mean, you know, Vampire Freaks, I started, you know, back when I was in college. It was just like a personal project, had like a message board and, you know, some picture galleries of my spooky friends and stuff. Something fun that I was doing because I was learning how to do computer programming and web design and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because nowadays, like, social networking sites, they have, like, a team of, like, thousands of people right. like, working on it. And it was just me doing the programming for Vampire Freaks. So, you know, I kind of just did it on my own. Started off small. Like, the first iteration, I was like, all you could do is, like, rate people. You can't even, like, message them for, like, the first week. And then I, and then people were like, uh, you can't message people so that i added message in like the next week and then you know kind of just slowly built up on it the thing with the website is that it was also kind of marketed as a dating service you could search for people that were currently online globally or that were local to you male female the list goes on there were tons of filters that you could apply there was also a rating system where you could get a score from 1 to 10 on your profile basically from anyone who came onto your page so people were in a constant battle to get high scores because you definitely didn't want your online boyfriend to think that you're some sort of no name or not important enough Enough. No, 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 we cannot let it happen. And that battle led to constant messages like, hey, here is 10, right back, please. We had the same system on this Russian network and it was annoying AF, so I totally get it. By the end of 2010, Vampire Freaks had more than 1,300,000 members. It may sound like not a lot on a global scale of things, especially compared to MySpace, but considering that it was a network mainly for misfits and outcasts, the number is actually pretty impressive. But in June of 2019, the founder announced that he would shut down the website the following year. In February 2020, in order to focus on Vampire Freak's online store that is still active, as well as the annual alternative festival Dark Side of the Con that is also still a thing. And just like that in 2020, the website was shut down. So one thing that I really struggled with was the hosting. Nowadays, it's like way easier. You have like right. on web services and all that. But back then, like 2004, computers were not nearly as good as they were now. So hosting was a struggle. You know, it got really expensive as you got more traffic. Hosting got really expensive, which is actually why we uh, opened up the online store is because the hosting for Vampire Freaks was so expensive. Yeah, and I wound up doing well and kind of like, you know, the website, social network site, promoted the online store store and the online store helps pay for the social networking site. I'm here in a shop called Vampire Freaks. This is our most popular seller, which are goggles. And a lot of people are like, well, what do they use for? Because you can't see out of them, but they wear them as hair accessories. So people going out dancing, well, don't wear them. They put them on top of their head. Now, before we get to the dark side of the website, let's go down memory lane and talk about the history of God subculture and what it stands for. And I have people asking all the time if I'm a vampire, if I'm a witch, and I just kind of smile and say, uh, no. When we dress like this, it's not because we want to drink blood and, uh, and roam around at night, even though we do roam around at night. It's a music-based subculture that began in the UK in the early 80s. It is often characterized by an affiliation to dark aesthetic. God developed from various southern youth subcultures, including punk, and evolved from these into Brown origins to more commercial visibility in the 90s. It was initially a phenomenon confined to the UK, although it has since found different articulations across the world. Why would people obsess about death, dress up like vampires, and keep dead things around the house? Gothic's Natalie Ritchie and Jimmy Vitsky are regulars at this popular club, which features Gothic Night. And every weekend, they help each other transform themselves into the living dead. As a music subculture is perhaps most noted by the popularity of the Sisters of Mercy band. But there were many other bands which may be broadly characterized as God. Ghoulish nightclubs and music, music that critics call vulgar and morose. Music that some say feeds an obsession with death and 
Hidden young people. God fashion is not just about wearing black, it's about expressing yourself through the clothing that is often considered unconventional. Its fashion reflects a particular attitude that is at once dark, hedgy, and romantic. They often wear clothing that is inspired by Victorian and Edwardian fashion, incorporating corsets, top hats, and many other vintage items. Adorned in vampire makeup, elaborate dress, black hair mostly, and fangs. But for some, gothic is a full-time lifestyle. I'm also a professional and lifestyle style dominatrix. Shady, who's at the fan club tonight with fellow dominatrix Sabrina, lives and dresses the part all the time, except her fangs are removable because they're inappropriate for her straight job as a makeup artist. They often use makeup to create a theatrical look that is inspired by horror movies and other dark media. By the way, just so you know, we're only talking about the general fashion tendency, obviously. Putting on my makeup is such a process that sometimes I don't look forward to it because, um, first of all, I I have to shave and I have to shave often. It usually takes me anywhere from an hour to two and a half hours. I don't like the negative attention from people, but after a while I just start to block it out because I got it every day at school. But they don't always look like this. By day, Natalie manages a beauty supply store and Jimmy drives a forklift in a warehouse. Still, for many Gothics, the ultimate lure seems to be dressing up. I think the whole Gothic lifestyle is mainly just, it's all theater. Everybody's on stage and this is their 15 minutes of fame. As for goth music today, it still continues to evolve, with new bands carrying on the tradition of the genre. <laughs> By the way, growing up I would always consider the band Hem to be a goth band, but I've learned that it's apparently not. And god people actually get offended by that. If they were all black, it doesn't mean they're god. I don't know. It's never late to learn, I guess. But is it true though? Subculture people, let me know. Shady describes her look as ethereal and romantic. It feels natural. I'm very comfortable in this and I think that it's a form of expression. Peter Thomas, who sells gothic and fetish clothes on Melrose, says it's not a Thing at all. They romanticize death, but they're not willing to like partake in it, but they like embrace it and they don't really have a problem with it. You know, they see it as something romantic rather than something uh, depressing. Okay, while talking about this subculture, it would be crime against humanity, not to mention the so-called mall god, also known as posers, as some will say. Life is pain. Life is only pain. Mall god is a term that was originally used as an insult to describe the fashion style of one of big gods in the late 90s, early 2000s. Apparently, they're known for imitating the god fashion style without actually knowing anything about the subculture. Beyond the stereotypical looks, I mean. Uh -huh, honey. They often could be found listening to new metal and industrial metal. And obviously, you could find them gathering in alternative stores such as Spencer's or Hot Topic. Speaking of Hot Topic, you can find a full video on that on my channel. You better check it out later. Long story short, mall gods are not actually considered to be part of the god community, because they share more in common with metal heads. This is so complicated. Life's like in conclusion, real gods hate them, or at least they used to hate them. But being honest, nowadays I feel like the mall god was not the worst thing that could happen to the subculture. And we all know what I'm hinting at. TikTok gods. No, 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 no. Okay, I'm not gonna be a TikTok hater. Now, the time has come for yet another Vitaly story time. How did I come across this subculture growing up in Russia? So, the year 2007. I was in elementary school and there was this show that was getting hugely popular on the local TV. It was called Stepmom or something like that. It was about this school girl that lost her mom in the early age. Doesn't matter. I would watch it every single day whenever I came home from school. But anyway, starting from the second season, they integrated a variety of subcultures into the show. Emos, gods, skinheads, you name it. To say that I was fascinated would be an understatement of the century. I've never seen something like that before and that was pretty much my first ever introduction to the whole subculture world. Check it out. I bet you've never seen what the Russian god looks like. You're welcome. My next encounter with the subculture was a darker one. Way darker actually. So there was this legit shocking story in my country, it was all over TV, when a group of goth guys not only had no life, but cooked and ate their girlfriend during a house party. Yes, they straight up baked her in the oven. I still remember the day the news broke, everyone was terrified. And ever since then, the god perception has changed completely, at least in my country. Being god was associated only with hanging out in a cemetery 
Mary, drinking somebody's blood or being a Satan. Speaking of drinking blood, it's time to talk about my 2010 online boyfriend. I have a lot of confessions to make, promise that you're not gonna judge me. So, in 2010 I was 12 years old and I was catfishing a shit ton of guys. Well, and girls actually, but mostly guys. There was this chat on my Nokia phone where I would connect with all of my victims. I was a 12 year old mess and they were definitely catfishing me too because they looked something like this. But anyways, there was this guy who I was talking to the most for a few months actually. He was my first internet love when life was simple and he was a part of the God subculture. We would talk on the phone pretty much every day and looking back now I realized that he was a p because even though I was pretending that I was 18 years old, my voice was like this. And I'm not even kidding. And he was a grown ass man, considering his voice. He definitely knew that my voice sounded nothing like an adult guy. But we kept talking. Anyways, it's not the point of the video. One day he started sending me weird messages, to say the least. Something like, did you know that my brother works at the hospital and he brings me the actual people's blood from work so I can drink it? <laughs> I'm a vampire, Vitaly. I'm a vampire. <laughs> not kidding, it was with this tone. What a time to be alive. Now, I don't know if that was true, probably not, but who knows. But at the time it did not scare me away whatsoever. Tell me you're reckless without telling me you're reckless. <laughs> it was the opposite actually. I was genuinely thrilled that my boyfriend was so dangerous and not like everybody else. And that we have a secret in common. <laughs> That's crazy actually. I lived a thousand lives, not gonna lie. I would even learn the subculture history for him so he doesn't think that I'm a poser. Cause I was scared to disappoint him. Welcome to my life. What did you do when you were 12 years old? But one day, my mom found out that I was talking to weirdos on the internet. And took my knocking away for a month or something like that. And I've never talked to my love again. <laughs> As any other network of that time, the website was filled with all kinds of creeps, stalkers and groomers. It's also been linked to several crimes, sands of crimes to be exact. I want to introduce you to the guy by the name Kimvir Gill. He was very active on the web, mostly using vampire freaks, under the nickname Fatality666. On his profile, he posted a lot of pics of himself posing with his gun, as well as made references to Columbine and 9-11, and yet somehow no one never thought anything wrong about it. Now, take a look at his profile description. His name is Kimvir. You will come to know him as Trench. He is male. He is 25 years of age. He lives in Quebec. He finds that it is an okay place to live. He is not a people person. He has met a handful of people in his life who are decent, but he finds the vast majority to be worthless. No good, niving, betraying, deceptive, mother f Work sucks. School sucks. Life sucks. What else can I say? Metal and goth kick ass. Life is like a video game. You gotta die sometime. But not only description, his entire profile was zeff and creepy. You can pause the video and read it yourself. September 13th, 2006. Remember everything as if it was yesterday or as if as if it was today. It's just it's always there in the back of my mind. Fifteen years since the Dawson College in Montreal, eighteen year old Anastasia de Souza in the rampage and nineteen others on September 13, 2006. Police who had been in the area already on another case intervened. The shooter was shot in the arm and then took his own life at 12.48 p.m. To this day, nobody knows what his motive was exactly, but probably he wanted to reenact Columbine since he was so fascinated by that story. Police later found the short note in Gail's trench coat. It said, sorry mom and the rest of family. I haven't imagined in my whole life that my son can do such a thing. He can hurt other people plus himself. He wasn't raised that way. She's the innocent victim. Absolutely, she didn't do anything. She didn't go to those type of websites to mess her mind. After this horrible incident, VF received a severe backlash, which led its owner to release an official statement. I offer my condolences to the victims and their families. It really is a tragic event, he wrote. However, we do not condone or influence this type of behavior in any way. Just because someone happens to be a member of Vampire Freaks doesn't mean that this website has influenced him to do such a horrible thing. The goth scene is a very friendly, nurturing, non-violent community, and we are very supportive of our users and do not condone any illegal activities. But the damage had already been done. Now the website was only being associated with the dark and tragic stuff, and its members were seen as danger to society. 
in the story of the troubled couple Jasmine Richardson and Jeremy Stanky. There was this Canadian couple that believed that they were from another universe, literally. Jasmine believed she was a vampire and Jeremy thought he was a werewolf. Are we in some sort of Twilight movie? It was at a punk concert that she met Jeremy Stanky a 23 year old with a vial of blood on his neck. As you can guess, they were the active users of the infamous website and carried their entire romance through the vampire freaks. On February 5, 2006, Jeremy asked her out and very soon they were actively dating. Their relationship thrived. Jeremy often called Jasmine to serenade her with the songs he wrote for her. I felt really flattered and loved. He was really romantic. He told me he loved me all the time. I was falling in love with him. Despite their passion, Jasmine's family obviously didn't like her much older boyfriend. Not only he was older, but he was also into this dark alternative scene that her parents did not like. But the couple didn't seem to care. More than that, the hostility of their friends only made them grow closer together. It was them against the world and they relished the feeling. That is when their plan began to take form and it was Jasmine who initiated one crazy idea. The idea of alive and her parents. One day she wrote to Jeremy, quote unquote, March 20, 2006, from Runaway Devil to Soul Leader. So I have this plan. It begins with me killing them and ends with me living with you. So are we set? I'm going to try and call you, but I really don't know if I'll be able to. They're treating me like I hate them so much, but I hope this won't bring us far apart. I hope to talk to you soon. Love you with all of my heart. Well, I love your plan, but we need to get a little more creative with like details and stuff. I wish they wouldn't treat you that way. Girl, it angers me to hear that. I dislike them very much. Don't worry, I love you too, my sexy beast. I hope to hear from you soon. Take care, my love. You have the key to my heart, and soon enough, you shall have my heart if I die. Because if I give it to you now, I die and you won't be able to hear how much I love you. In the minds of the two lovers, nothing could stop them. And on April 23rd, 2006, nothing did. At 4 a.m., Jeremy threw a pine cone in Jasmine's window to let her know he'd arrived. She went down and opened a basement window. While entering, Jeremy caused quite a ruckus, which woke up Deborah. Thinking it was her daughter sneaking out again, Deborah went down, clad in her nightgown. She was surprised to see a stranger and a neoprene face mask. The man was armed with a knife. With both parents dead, Jasmine and Jeremy went upstairs to kill Jasmine's eight-year-old brother, Jacob. I know, effing creepy. And unfortunately, these are only few stories that happen on a daily basis on Vampire Freaks. Throughout the years, there were a ton of cases involving all kinds of creepy rumors. And I'm not even gonna talk about it, because they all pretty much have the same case scenario. While doing my research I've also stumbled across some stories about cannibalism that involve the website, but for some reason, every single source that mentioned that story has been deleted. Celebrity, if you had a profile on Vampire Freaks, definitely let me know about your experience in the comments down below. It doesn't have to be horrible, maybe some of you have nothing bad to say about the website. Okay legends, I think this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed this type of content as much as I do, please, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, which is a crime against humanity, not gonna lie. Follow me on Instagram at Vitaly for the record and I will see you in my next video this week and remember, your ex is definitely toxic, the best way to make him bitter is to become successful. Bye legends!